Okay, this is the runoff analysis dialog box that defines the settings for your runoff simulation. You can define the you can use the existing surface topography as the base topography for the analysis or if you've done a Opti surface design you can use the proposed surface. Uh, you define the calculation grid spacing in in meters and that's basically how often it will calculate a runoff depth and velocity. In this case we've got it set to 10 meters which is pretty uh, usual for this analysis. Be careful not to go too small because the the simulation time, the calculation time will uh, increase dramatically as you reduce that that's that number. Uh, you could go out to 20 meters or 30 meters if you um, if you uh, have some smooth topography. You have to be careful if you have a contour bank or something in topography that you want to simulate its impact that the uh, the grid spacing actually will pick up that topography uh, pick up that contour bank so in this case if we've got it set to 10 meters our contour bank would have to be at least 10 meters wide in all locations for us to and that would be the crest of the contour bank then we've got uh, the hydrology in this area here which defines um, the rainfall event and some some other hydraulic characteristics for the field. Uh, the simulation event duration is in hours and basically you've got a uh, this defines how big the, the rainfall storm or rainfall event is that you're going to apply to the field. Now you need to have that rainfall event large enough so that it uh, it rains long enough for the field to generate the highest runoff that it can and that's in hydrology speak that's called the critical duration and it's basically the, the, the time that it takes for runoff to run off from the, the um, the longest flow path through the field. So if the flow path is from top to bottom of the field, which in this case it's roughly 1.5 kilometers, if that water is going to run off at say an average runoff velocity of a quarter of a meter per second, that is 1500 meters divided by 0.25 is 6000 seconds or 100 minutes or 1.6 hours. So it takes 1.6 hours for water to run off from the top of the furthest most point in the field to the to the bottom of the field. Now basically our rainfall event has to be longer than that so that we capture um, the, the rainfall intensities um, required to produce our runoff. Now, you know, this is quite a large field, 1.5 kilometers. So you can imagine for smaller fields, the um, the critical duration is going to reduce. So three hours we've got set here is is well outside the 1.6 hours that we've got. We've roughly calculated as the critical duration for this field, so we're quite comfortable in saying that we've captured the uh, the critical uh, rainfall duration for this field. Uh, you can reduce that if you want, but it, the default is three hours, and, and I'd, I'd generally leave it there. The next two settings are the rainfall uh, depths that um, define our rainfall intensities. Now we have a two durations: a one-hour uh, design rainfall depth and a 24-hour design rainfall depth. So basically, you select a a depth that you think your field should be able to handle. Typically that would be like a 1 in 10 year rainfall event. So in this particular location, we're in North Queensland, Australia, around uh, just below Townsville in there. We, the 1 hour rainfall depth for a 10 year storm event is 70 millimetres. So every 10 years we'll roughly get a, a rainfall, de uh, rainfall event that drops 70 millimetres in 1 hour. And then also over 24 hours, 
um, will have 200 millimeters dropped once every 10 years. Um, and basically we want our field to be able to handle these type of intensities. So a 1 in 10 year event we want to be able to handle without uh, significant um, erosion. It uses these 24 hour and 1 hour rainfall depths to estimate the rainfall intensities for durations, all durations between 24 hours down to 15 minutes. So it uses a um, some mathematics to uh, interpolate and extrapolate those rainfall intensities, and then it creates a storm event of three hours duration, which has the rainfall of peak rainfall intensities from 15 minute rainfall event out to three hours. 15 minute being high intens highest intensity, reducing out to three hours. Um, so the good thing about that is that you can run a single rainfall event over this field and capture the rainfall intensities for all durations for 15 minutes out to 3 hours. Um, next thing we've got the runoff proportion of rainfall as a percent. That is your basically your runoff coefficient, so that's the proportion of rainfall that will become runoff. In this case we've got 60%. The other 40% we're assuming will infiltrate into the soil. Uh, hydraulic conductivity, oh, sorry, hydraulic roughness is um, in, and it's Manning's N in, in um, engineering speak, and uh, you can get, you can look this up in uh, Google. Different uh, Manning's N values for uh, different surface roughnesses. Basically 0.02 corresponds to a bare soil. Uh, if you have a soil with vegetative matter um, on the surface then that roughness will go up to say 0.04 is getting um, starting to get rough in terms of agricultural fields. Although if you have a really rough surface um, you can get up to 0.1 um, for a freshly tilled field say with a lot of uh, organic trash built into it. Then we can also add furrows or raised beds into the um, into the field topography that basically channel runoff in a certain direction. Now the, the runoff will overtop these furrows if the if the depth gets deep enough. In plan view they can only run in a, in a single straight direction. You define that direction in this number here. Uh, 90.2 degrees we've got here, which is a direction rotation from north. We can also define the uh, the furrow spacing W, which is this dimension here. Furrow bed height is this H dimension here. That's the depth of the furrow before the water will actually start to overtop uh, the furrows. Um, so that's the bed height. Uh, then we have the furrow side slope, which is this slope here, this S here. So the, the horizontal um, over vertical. In this case, we've got a one-to-one -one slope on the on the furrow uh, side slope there. And then we have a bottom width B, which is this dimension here.